This is part 14 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss configuring an ASP.NET Core application using an environment variable. In most organizations, we have these three common development environments, development, staging and production. Now, let's quickly understand why we need these different development environments. We software developers typically use the development environment for our day-to-day -day development work. We want non-minified JavaScript and CSS files to be loaded on a development environment for ease of debugging. Similarly, we want developer exception page if there is an unhandled exception so we can understand the root cause of the exception and fix it if required. Staging environment. Many organizations try to keep their staging environment as identical as possible to the actual production environment. The primary reason for the staging environment is to identify any deployment related issues. Also, if you're developing a B2B application, that is a business to business application, you may be interfacing with other service provider systems. Many organizations usually set up their staging environment to interface with the service providers as well for complete end-to-end -end testing. We usually do not troubleshoot and debug on a staging environment. So for better performance, we want minified JavaScript and CSS files to be loaded. If there is an unhandled exception, we want to display a user-friendly error page instead of the developer exception page. A user-friendly error page will not contain any technical details. It contains a generic message, maybe something like, something has gone wrong, please email, chat, or call our application support for further assistance. Production environment. This is the actual live environment that we use for day-to-day -day business activities. Production environment should be configured for maximum security and performance. So load minified JavaScript and CSS files to improve the performance. For better security, display a user-friendly error page instead of the developer exception page. Displaying the developer exception page on the production environment is bad for two reasons. First, the technical details it contains are cryptic and may not make any sense to the end user. Second, these technical details can be used by a malicious user to hack into your application. In ASP.NET Core, we use the environment variable ASP.NET Core underscore environment to set the runtime environment for our application. I introduced this environment variable to you in part 8 of this video series. On our local development machine, we usually set this environment variable in launch settings.json file. So, if we take a look at launch settings.json file in the project that we've been working with so far, notice for this profile IIS Express, the environment variable is set to development. And this is the profile that we are using at the moment to run this project from Visual Studio. Now, let's simplify the code that we have in configure method. First of all, we do not want to pass the developer exception page options object to the developer exception page middleware. So let's delete that. And instead of using file server middleware, let's use static files middleware. And we also do not want to throw the exception here. So let's get rid of that as well. Notice we already have this service iHosting environment injected into the configure method. Now from the IntelliSense, notice this service provides information about the web hosting environment. So we can use this IE hosting environment service instance to access this environment variable value, which at the moment is set to development. So instead of writing hello world to the response stream, let's write hosting environment. To this, let's append the environment name. So let's use the I hosting environment service instance and on that we have environment name property. Let me zoom this in a bit. Notice the hosting environment is development and this value is coming from our environment variable ASP.NET Core underscore environment. Let's change the value to staging. Save the changes and reload our web page. Notice now the runtime environment is staging. So we usually set this environment variable 
on our local development machine in this launch settings.json file. We can also set it in the operating system if we want to. To set it in the operating system, open the control panel. To open the control panel, launch run window and type the command control for control panel and then click OK. In the search text box that's present in the top right hand corner, start typing environment variable and you'll see this option, edit system environment variables, click on that and in the system properties window, click environment variables button and under the section system variables, click the new button. So this allows us to add a new environment variable. The variable that we want to add is SBNet core underscore environment and let's set this to the value of development and then click OK on all the pop-up windows to close them. Now let's comment the environment variable in launch settings.json. Save our changes. Now we expect this code to display the environment variable value set in the operating system. Production. Where is this value coming from? Well, this is the default value. You might be wondering why is production set as the default value? Well, this is done on purpose for better security and performance. Imagine on a production server, we have forgot to set the ASP.NET Core environment variable to a value of production. If the default value is development, then the application may display developer exception page on the production environment and it could be exploited by a malicious user to hack into your application. Also, instead of loading minified JavaScript and CSS files, the non-minified files may be loaded. So for better performance and security, it defaults to a value of production if we have not explicitly set the ASP.NET Core environment variable. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, on my local development machine, I have set the environment variable, ASP.NET Core environment, to a value of development. So why are we not seeing this value? Why are we seeing this default value production? Well, that's because when we have set the environment variable in the operating system for the first time, for Visual Studio to be able to read that value, we have to restart Visual Studio. So let's do that. And then open our project, Employee Management. Restart complete, so let's run our project. There we go. Now we see the environment variable value set in the operating system. On your machine, if you still do not see this value, make sure to restart your machine once. Now what if I have the environment variable set in both the places, that is in the operating system and in this launch settings.json file. Let's uncomment this line. So in launch settings.json file, we have set it to staging and in the operating system, we have set it to development. So now when we have it set at both the places, the value in this launch settings.json file will override the value in the operating system. Let's prove this by running our project. There we go. We see the value staging from launch settings.json file. Now on the iHosting environment service, in addition to this environment name property, we also have this method is development. It returns a boolean. True if the ASP.NET Core environment variable is set to development, otherwise false. In addition to is development, we also have is production and is staging. But what if I have a custom environment like user acceptance testing environment or a quality assurance environment? Well, even these custom environments are supported in ASP.NET Core. So if you have a custom environment like UAT, for example, and you want to check if the environment is UAT, then use this method is environment and to this pass the name of your environment, in this case UAT. So with this value in place, if we set this environment variable value to UAT, then this method returns true. If we set it to any other value, it returns false. Now let's change this back to is development. So if the environment is development, 
then we want to display the developer exception page if it is any other environment for example if it is staging or production or UAT then we want to display a friendly error page we'll discuss how to do this in detail in our upcoming videos for now let's delete this else if block now let's quickly recap some of the important points on our local development machine we set the environment variable ASP.NET Core environment in launch settings.json file on a staging or production server we set it in the operating system use iHosting environment service to access the runtime environment runtime environment defaults to production if it is not set explicitly in addition to the three standard environments development staging and production custom environments like UAT, QA etc are also supported in ASP.NET Core for using a custom environment use is environment method of i hosting environment service tag helpers are new in ASP.NET Core in a razor view that is in a dot CSHTML view page we can use something called an environment tag helper this environment tag helper supports rendering different content depending on the value of the ASP.NET Core environment variable we'll discuss tag helpers including the environment tag helper in detail as we progress through this course and create models views and controllers for our application that's it in this video thank you for watching